Hi everybody, it's David here and welcome. Hope you're having a good day so far. And I'm just doing some warm ups because that's what we're gonna talk about today on today's tutorial is ways to warm up your fingers in the morning and on your keyboards and practice two things, chords and scales today. And so using your right hand on the scales. So we're gonna do those two things to help you learn some ways to practice your chords and your scales and get warm-up exercises for your fingers and before we get started on this don't forget put on a happy face and make sure that you please hit the subscribe button hit the like button and ring the little bell on the side there because when I put out new videos you'll be notified when the new videos come out so today's video is warm-ups on chords and scales and having a little fun at the same time so let's get started All right, welcome back. So let's get started on today's tutorial. And I hope you enjoy these and I hope you find these helpful because every week I'm gonna add a new tutorial on a different uh, skill. And today's skill is of course warming up. So no matter what instrument you like to play, whether it's guitar or piano or drums or saxophone, warming up on your instrument every day is a good way to increase your skills and help build those skills. The more you do it, the more consistent you are, then the better your skills will get. And if you've ever tried to play guitar, this is maybe something you can relate to. If you've ever tried to play guitar and you are holding those strings down with your left hand, you notice the first thing you notice is, ow, my fingers hurt, because you're holding those strings down on the guitar and it hurts your fingers. So it takes a little while to play this guitar so that your fingers get used to the pressure of playing on the strings. And so that's just one example of why you do it every day, a little bit every day, and after a while it'll become easier and easier. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Warm up on chords and scales. I hope you got your keyboard ready and I hope you got your keyboard set up in front of your computer laptop. So why do we do warm ups? It helps your fingers get exercised just like everything else. Now, if you don't believe me, take your right hand and put on top of your left hand and then put your left hand on the piano keyboard and then play some keys. And if you have your right hand on top of your left hand when you're playing the keys, you're gonna feel those muscles in your left hand. Same thing with the other hand. You're gonna feel those tendons and those muscles and tendons in your arms work out. And those are the tendons and muscles that we're working out when we do our warm-up exercises for the keyboard. So we're gonna focus on just two things, chords and chord inversions and scales. Well, let's take a look at what we did last time. Last time, on last week's video, I showed six basic chords in C major. So let's just run through those real quickly here. C major. And then F major. And of course, you can play along while I'm doing this on your keyboard. G major. <clears throat> A minor. D minor. E minor. And playing those chords every day and practicing those chords will help you get better at playing them. Next week, I'm gonna show you how to spice those chords up by adding extra notes. But for today, for today's activity, let's keep all those chords to simple three note chords. We'll add some more notes next time in the next lesson. I wanna talk about roots, first inversion, and second inversion chords. Now this is a term that you're gonna hear a lot if you take piano lessons in the future or if you uh, watch another tutorial on keyboards, you're gonna hear them talk about inversion chords, root chords, first inversion, second inversion. I wanna real briefly explain what that is uh, when it comes to chords. All the chords, let me scratch that. Some of the chords that I've been teaching you so far, 
are root inversion chords, like C. Not all of them are, I'll get to that in a second. But let's look at C. So C, E, G, C, E, G. Play that with both hands. This is called root inversion. But watch what I'm gonna do with my fingers. I just shifted my fingers up a little bit. Now I'm playing second, or I'm sorry, now I'm playing first inversion. This is still a C chord, C major, but this is the first inversion. Root, first inversion, second inversion. Watch what I'm doing. It's still all a C chord. The only difference is I'm playing them in different inversions. The notes are C, E, and G. Now the notes are E, G, and C. Now G, C, and E. What makes it different is the bass note, the bottom note. When I start off on a C, this is the root. C is the root. If I start on an E, it's, this is the, the third of the chord, so we'll call this first inversion. You're actually playing the E in the bass. It makes the chord sound a little different. Your ear will, after a while, your ear will tell the difference between the first inversion and root. Now let's go to the next inversion. This is the G, the C, and the E. Hear the bass note? And third in the bass, or the E. And then C. So that's the difference between the chords. This is the root, first inversion, second inversion. And we do that with all the chords. All the chords have different inversions that we can work through. So C major, that's root position. But look at F major on the chart. That's actually the, the second inversion. This is not the first inversion, it's not the root, because the C is in the bass. If I put the F in the bass, that's root inversion for F major. Let's go to G major. That's also got the, the fifth in the bass, or the G, so this is the second inversion. And then A minor, second inversion, D minor. Ah, this is which one? Which one is this? This is the root inversion, or the root position. And an E minor is also in root position. So let me briefly explain why I do it this way. Now watch what happens to my hand if I play the chords all in root position. C, F, G, A, D minor, E minor. Do you notice what's happening? If I play all the chords like this, then I'm doing a lot of jumping around. If I play the chords like they are on the chart, my hands aren't moving around a lot. C, F, G, A, D, E, C. My hand's not jumping around the keyboard so much. So it makes it smoother, makes it easier to actually play chords that way. So a couple of things. You can play chords in different inversions. You can play them as a block, like that, or you can arpeggiate them. Or sometimes, in, uh, they call this broken chords, where you play the chord in an arpeggio or a broken chord. Now there's other things you can do. You can uh, use your chords like an accompaniment. So I'm playing like bass notes with the left hand and putting some notes, block chords with the right hand. So you can do that also. That's another technique. So what we're gonna do right now as a warm up is we're gonna play chords. And for a little fun, I'm gonna put on the drum machine.
because that kind of makes it fun. One, two, and one, two, here I go. F major. G major. A minor. D minor. E minor. And back to C. It's fun to use the drum machine because that's like a metronome. It keeps you in tempo. Now you can play block chords like I was doing, or you can do something different while the drum machine's going. Let me do something a little bit different. Watch. Here goes. Drum machine on. And a one, two, something like this. So I was doing something completely different there, wasn't I? I was still doing the chords, but I was kind of making up a song using one of those uh, six chords as I went through using progressions. So that's a good warm-up exercise. Playing chords, either playing in different inversions, practice the different inversions every time you sit down at the piano after a while you will start to be able to play those without even looking at your hands I wasn't looking at my hands I'm just so used to playing them and because I practice them a lot so that you practice them every day for 10 minutes you will get better too now let's move to scales and talk about that when we talk about playing scales with our hands, they use the number system on our fingers. And if you look on your uh, computer, you'll see the chart that I have for the hand numbers. The thumbs are going to be ones. Pinkies are fives. But notice that your hands are mirror opposites. So if I put my thumb on middle C, that's going to be uh, number one right there. And I would put all my fingers down on the keys. Play the C chord just like I did earlier. Notice how my hands are sitting on the keys. I've talked about this before. Let me show you real quick. I'm going to pick up my hands and then turn them around. Kind of like I'm holding on to a ball if you do that. And relax them. Sometimes I feel like my hands are tense. So I just kind of have to squeeze them a couple times, crack your knuckles, whatever it takes, and then relax them. You don't want your fingers on the keys like this. I've seen people do this when they're playing piano and it just oh, it drives me crazy because I can't play that way. So fingers should be up a little bit, nice and curved. So it makes it, you can, it makes it easier for you, I think, to play the keys this way. So your hands don't move around a lot. You just keep your fingers in that position. And the other way you don't want to play is like this. One finger at a time. You've, you've probably seen people do that on a typewriter. And that drives me crazy too when you're... It's okay when you're just starting out, but when you start to learn music and playing songs, you're not going to be able to play. You're not going to be able to play a song using one finger at a time. That, or even two fingers. You, know, you can do it for a few things, but when you're actually playing music, you want to get those fingers all used to playing at the same time. Now let's uh, show you the five finger position. Take a look on your uh, computer and you'll see a chart. It says C, five finger position. And the first thing I wanna do is get my right hand on the keys. And I wanna be on middle C. How do I find middle C? Well, remember the two black keys? That's one way to find C. Play those two black keys, the sharp and the flat keys. with this hand <laughs> there you go and I got my pinky on C and my thumb on middle C middle C is gonna be right in the middle of the piano Boom. so that's gonna be the middle C right there 
So if my thumb's on middle C, my pinky's on the C below that. And I'm gonna play the scale just like this, starting on C. Just as you start to go faster, you're going to notice your fingers kind of get tripped up. That's a good thing to do as an exercise. And stop. You can also shift and go up to the D minor. E minor. F major. G major, A minor. Oh, now I'm on the B key. This is actually a B diminished. I haven't told you that yet. If you play that chord right there, that's a B diminished chord. I just showed you a new chord and I wasn't supposed to do that. Let's go back. So that's B diminished. So you got actually can make a chord by playing all up the scale. Alright, so you've got the keys, the C finger, the five finger position. Practice that in the morning when you're warming up, just doing that to start with. But now we're going to get to the actual scale. So we're going to use our right hand, not the left hand right now, just the right hand. Left hand can take a break. Take a break, left hand. Go have a iced tea or something for a while. Alright, so right hand. Put your thumb on middle C. Now take a look on the chart on your keyboard, on your uh, computer, and you're going to see the C's number one. So it goes one, two, three, two, one. Or C, D, E, D, C. But watch what happens on your chart there when I get up to the F. Did you see what on the screen what I did with my thumb? My thumb is going to quickly Go underneath and be ready to play the F. Try that a few times with on your keyboard. C, D, E, and then your thumb shifts up. After you practice that sometimes, do it slow. Shift. Shift. And when you get ready to stop, then you can stop on the C with your pinky. When you're coming down, it's the same thing, just the opposite. So it's pinky or thumb, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, three, two, one. All right, so you want to practice that slowly. Let's use a drum beat. Nice and slow. One. Now it's your turn. See if you can follow along. One and two and let's try it together. Here we go. Just go up one octave and back. Now we're going to try to do two octaves. Ready? Here we go. Shift. And shift. And stop. And there we go. So every time I say shift, that's when that thumb goes underneath. One, two, three, four, shift. One, two, three, shift. One, two, three, four. And then if you're going to stop at the top C, just use your pinky on C. All right, so we did two things today to warm up on chords and the C scale with your right hand. I also showed you how to play the five finger positions. Notes, those are good, easy warm ups right there. So if you do those warm ups every day, chords and five finger position. Go up the scale if you want. And to make it kind of fun, to make it a little more enjoyable, put on a drum beat 
or a metronome or something that will help keep you in tempo when you're playing your five note scale. And when you're playing chords, you can even make up little rhythms to go with the beat. So if you want to get crazy and do some fun things like that, that's fine. It's all going to help your fingers get used to playing the chords and the scales. And if you do that for 20 minutes, 20 minutes every day practicing chords, practicing scales. If you do that regularly and you do it consistently every day, spend a little time, you will notice results in about three weeks, four weeks, a month and a half, you'll start noticing that you're able to play those chords so easily. You'll be saying, Dave, I'm ready for some new scales. I'm ready for some new chords. And we'll get to that because in the next couple weeks, I'm going to show you how to play major scales in different keys. I'm going to show you how to play minor scales. I'm going to show you how to make next week. I'm going to show you how to make some spicy chords. Who doesn't like spice, right? In your food, you want a little spice. Put a little garlic, a little pepper, and then spice up your food. Well, we do the same thing with music when we add notes to the chords. I mean, this is just a mundane C major chord, but when you spice it up a little bit. Oh, I just added a new note. This note. So I'm going to show you how to add some notes to the chord to make it a new chord, but also spice it up a little bit. So I hope you have a great week. Please don't forget to hit subscribe. Ring the little bell on the side so that you'll be notified the next video that comes out. You'll get a notification. Have a great week. Keep practicing your scales and your chords, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.